In today's episode, we want to take a closer look at the delicious fruit of the apple tree. The apple is one of the most popular fruits around the world. Its origin is from Central Asia and it is believed that the apple found its way to Europe through the Silk Road. It was not until the 17th century that apples were imported to North America by colonists and the first apple orchard was planted in Boston in 1625. As you can see, the apple has only been in the United States for 400 years. That's actually not even that long. Nowadays, a world without apples? Pretty much unthinkable. In 2019, 87 tons of apples were produced worldwide, with China being by far the largest producer. Over the years, we have bred many different varieties. Whether for pure consumption, for cooking and baking, or for the production of apple juice. With now over 7,500 varieties, I think there is a suitable one for every eventuality. But now it's time to finally take a, let's say, more detailed look at the world of an apple under a microscope. Let's start right away with the apple skin or peel, also called the exocarp. Many people peel their apples before they actually eat them. In this section, you'll discover why it may be better to eat them instead of getting rid of them. The function of the skin, in the first place, is to protect the inside of the apple from all kinds of environmental influences. In the video here, you can see that the apple skin looks kind of glossy and surely you have had an encounter with an apple in your life that somehow felt extremely greasy and sticky in your hand. The reason for your greasy hands was a naturally formed wax layer on the apple skin. It keeps off hungry insects, but also protects the apple from drying out. The peel also preserves the flesh from oxidation, a process you've probably observed many times as well. Within a few minutes, the light, yellowish and appetizing looking apple piece turns into an unappealing looking brown something. The presence of vitamin C in the skin plays an important role in preventing the oxidation of the flesh. To illustrate the effectiveness of vitamin C, I prepared two apple slices. I now drizzle the apple piece on the right side with a little bit of lemon juice because lemon juice has a high concentration of vitamin C. Within a very short time, we can observe how the untreated apple piece turns brown due to the oxidation. The other one, however, barely changed its color. So, we can say that it does its job quite well. Now, back to the peel itself. Have you ever wondered what those little weird spots on the apple skin are? These spots are called lenticels and under the microscope the small bumps are very easy to see. These lenticular cork pores are clearly distinguishable from the surrounding reddish tissue. Their job is to let the apple breathe. But the apple peel has even more interesting things to offer. Let's take a closer look at these apple peel cells. These cells are also called collinchoma cells and they are part of the supporting tissue of the apple. They help the apple retain its unmistakable shape. Here we can nicely observe that the cell walls are only partially thickened by cellulose and pectin substances. This keeps them stable yet flexible and allowing the apple to grow without being damaged. 
This reddish coloration you can see here comes from the natural pigment anthocyanin. This pigment is the reason why apples have such a beautiful red color. Anthocyanin is an antioxidant. There are studies that show it can be very healthy for humans to consume it because it could boost our cancer defenses. In addition, there are many other essential nutrients in the skin, such as vitamin K, A, calcium and potassium, for example. As you can see, eating the apple peel is a good thing, but give it a rinse before eating it, so you can get rid of possible pesticides. Next, we'll tackle the delicious part of the apple, the flesh, also called the mesocarp. An apple normally consists of 85% water, and we can already see that here very well because the flesh seems quite juicy, which means that the cells are filled with water. It becomes even clearer when we prepare a small piece of the tissue so that we can take a closer look at the cells under the microscope. Here we see large, thin-walled parenchyma cells. These cells are also called storage cells and, when it comes to the apple, they obviously live up to their name. Although they are mainly filled with water, you can also find many other important nutrients in them. They also contain the natural sugar that makes apples taste so sweet. Now I want to ask you a question. Do you eat the apple core, yes or no? Well, personally, I've always eaten it. And for that, I've gotten a funny look or two in the past. But I wonder why. The apple core or endocarp is almost identical to the mesocarp that everyone eats without questioning it. Well, okay, yes, it is true. The closer we get to the apple seeds, the tougher the texture of the flesh gets. If we look at the tissue here under a higher magnification, we see that there are some other cell types mixed in and these cells do seem to be quite different from the juicy storage cells. These cells are known as scleroids. Typical for them are their heavily thickened cell walls. Cell wall thickening, in this case, comes from the deposition of cellulose, pectin and lignin, substances that we usually refer to as dietary fibers. So it is rather healthy to eat the sometimes very chewy apple core. And now that we've learned something about the apple core, we can move on to the apple seeds. Here you can see the leathery brown and somehow wooden looking skin of the seed. In botany, this skin is also called the testa. Under the microscope, the fibrous supporting tissue can be determined very well. This tissue is there to protect the seed. The seed coat is almost indigestible due to these cells also called the sclerids. This means that even if the seed has been eaten by an animal, it often remains intact. Here we are looking at the cross section of the seed. The brownish looking edge is the wooden looking skin of the apple seed, which we have seen before. That bright white stuff in the middle are mainly the cotyledons. Until the seedling can take care of itself, they provide it with all the essential nutrients necessary for its development. Oh, and by the way, you should avoid chewing the seeds. The inside of the seed is rich in unsaturated fatty acids, especially linoleic acid, which can cause inflammation in the body. They also contain something called amygdalin. When eaten, it turns into highly toxic hydrogen cyanide, 
And that is something we'd better avoid. I think now that we've really learned a lot about the apple, the most common questions have finally been answered. Yes, an apple is healthy, especially a red one that we eat with the skin still intact. But unfortunately, just eating apples probably won't be enough to keep the doctor away. Thank you. I really had fun showing you the microscopic world of an apple. And if you enjoyed it as well, you can now click on the subscribe button so you won't miss any upcoming microscopic adventures in the future.